we are going to debunk the biggest myth about this whiskey. If you're new to Top Whiskeys, you should click that subscribe button. If you've been watching Top Whiskeys videos and you haven't clicked the subscribe button, you should do that too because we post new whiskey videos every week and you don't want to miss out. I want to start by telling you a story. Old Forester is delicious. That's not the story, but that's as a side point. Old Forester, delicious. The story begins in LAX. I was flying back from California to London. I was really stressed out and annoyed because my flight had been canceled and delayed by about six hours. So to make it up to me, British Airways gave me a free drinks voucher, which would help but not make up for the fact that I had six hours of my life to spend in an airport like Tom Hanks. You ever feel like you're just living in an airport? So I went up to the bar and wasn't paying loads of attention and couldn't actually see what was behind the bar because I wasn't wearing my glasses. I wasn't wearing my glasses because they make me look like this, which makes me look like kind of a dork. So we'll just take those off. So I just said, get me a bourbon. And this should have been my first clue that I was in a terrible, terrible place because the bartender looked me straight in the eye and said, we don't have any bourbon, which is a terrible thing for any bar. Any bar around the world that doesn't have bourbon has a problem. But I didn't have my glasses, so I couldn't really see what they had. What I could see was that they had a Jack Daniels because even a blind man can recognize a bottle of Jack Daniels. So I just said, I'll have a bottle of Jack. I'm not, not the whole bottle, I wanted just a measure of it. But he got the idea. And he looked back at me and said, I think you'll find that Jack Daniels is from Tennessee and is not a bourbon. And there are two things to explore in this statement. First, I think you'll find that anyone who says, I think you'll find at the beginning of a sentence is a dick. And they're about to say something very dicky, which is exactly what this bartender did. And the second thing, which does slightly annoy me, is that technically this dick bartender wasn't wrong. Jack Daniels isn't a bourbon but not for the reasons that he said. Just because Jack Daniels is made in Tennessee doesn't automatically mean it's not a bourbon. Jack Daniels isn't a bourbon because they do charcoal maple filtering, which is completely different and makes Jack Daniels distinctive and why it's so nice and lovely to drink. And we can talk about Jack Daniels another day, but Jack Daniels isn't a bourbon because of the way that it's made not because it's from Tennessee, which is what this guy was trying to tell me. So in this video, I want to debunk the big myth that bourbon needs to come from Kentucky because it doesn't. Wow, oh man, my head just exploded. What is bourbon? There are actually really simple rules to define what bourbon is. So this is Old Forester. It's a bourbon. What does that tell us about it? Well, we know that this is 51% corn because for something to be called bourbon, it needs to be 51% corn. The other grains can be a combination of anything else. It could be malted barley, it could be rye, doesn't really matter. 51% corn. The next requirement is when it goes into the mash ton, it goes into the mash ton at 160 proof, which for those of you who like maths means that it's 80% alcohol because proof is double the alcohol percentage. The other requirement is that it's 125 proof when it goes into the barrel. And I will leave you to work out that maths for yourself. Tip 125 divided by two. Math, 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 math. Other requirement is that it's from the United States. That's it. That 
is what bourbon is. And so most people will tell you that bourbon comes from Kentucky, which for the most part is true. 95% of the world's production of bourbon does come from Kentucky. But that's not technically part of the definition. It just needs to be from the United States. The other 5% comes from anywhere else in the US. And some of it is really delicious. So I've got three that I strongly recommend you try. The first is Kings County. It comes from Brooklyn, which you'd never think you'd get bourbon from Brooklyn. So already you're going to impress your friends. But they've got two bourbons, a straight bourbon and a peated bourbon. The peated bourbon from Kings County I think is incredible. I really like these kind of lightly peated whiskeys and as a bourbon that has light peat, it's so cool. Really unique and something that's quite different from what you get in those traditional Kentucky bourbons. Definitely worth trying out Kings County. The next one is A. Smith Bowman. It's a little bit different. It has a slight more edge to it than Buffalo Trace. A. Smith Bowman, if you're looking for something that's similar to a typical bourbon but just a bit different, that's the one to go with. The third, and this is my favorite non-Kentucky bourbon, is Few. I've talked about Few before. It's one of my favorite distilleries. It's based in Illinois and they make fantastic bourbon. So those are my three recommendations. And any time that you have a dick bartender who tells you that bourbon needs to be from Kentucky, you tell him to stuff it because he's wrong. Hope you enjoyed this video. Remember to subscribe to Top Whiskies. We post new videos every week. Thanks for watching.